Well, what do we have here? Studio Ginger uploading regular content? Must be an early Christmas. Welcome back to Cinemuck, the place where we talk about the muck and grime of today's Hollywood film industry. I'm your host, and let's begin. So first on the to-do list, we're going to be talking about Thor Ragnarok. I'm not necessarily a gigantic fan of all the Thor movies. Uh, I haven't really seen all the first one, and I saw the second one, and it was alright. But I'm intrigued by this one, because, well, you know, Thor fights Hulk. That's awesome. So... But now the pool just keeps getting juicier because now we have confirmed uh, appearance from Benedict Cumberbatch's Doctor Strange in that movie. I thought he was being saved till Infinity War, but apparently not. He's going to be in Thor Ragnarok. I don't know under what circumstances, but he's definitely going to be in there. And it seems like the perfect opportunity for Thor to recruit him into the new Avengers. The director has said that the events of Thor Ragnarok will end Thor's trilogy. But then it'll also build the events directly into Infinity War Part 1. But on the other hand, I mean, Thor Ragnarok comes out this year and it leads into Infinity War, which is really what the big Marvel Universe has been leading up to. And a part of me just doesn't know what the heck Marvel is going to do after Infinity War. I mean, it's not like they stop making movies, but they've established this big franchise and it's going to end with Infinity War. And Infinity War... Part 2 is going to come out like three years from now. So we have like three more years of of Marvel. And then I have no clue what they're going to do. I'd like to I'd like to be at the board meeting where they discuss the future plans of Marvel. Because I feel like it would be a little something like this. Alright guys, lay them on me. We just finished our big movie franchise that we've been doing for the past decade. I need ideas. I need them now. Could we redo Spider-Man? Nah, nah, Sony's got the rights again. Anything else? Oh. Uh. Sell out? Brilliant! Heck, there's only one more movie for Marvel to release before Infinity War comes out, and that's Black Panther. One more movie, and then we're there. We're, we're in the finish line. Whoo! Next topic! Speaking of Marvel movies, why not talk about the one that came out last week, Spider-Man Homecoming, the one that everyone's talking about. The movie is actually generating a lot of buzz and hype on Fandango, with a bunch of pre-ticket sales far outpacing any other blockbuster to come out in the past, you know, month. Far outpacing Wonder Woman, Despicable Me 3, Baby Driver, Transformers, Spider-Man Homecoming is just racing ahead at a very fast pace. Just in the United States alone, just domestically, uh, and it's opening weekend, it's projected to make almost $120 million. And if you go outside of the U.S. and to all other countries, it's projected to make almost $210 million worldwide. That's a lot of money! What on earth could you ever do with $210 million? Th the possibilities are endless! Heck, if someone told me the secret to making $210 million was to make a superhero based off an animal that nobody likes, well, heck, I have an idea! This summer, a hero will rise. I am the Viper. I speak to the serpents. I speak to them. They understand me. Are you hurt, little one? Are you hurt? This poor creature is in pain. I must save it. But Viper, if you're a superhero, don't you need a supervillain? Aha! Yes, I agree. And I have just the perfect villain. The everlasting evil of Rodendakis. His evil knows no bounds. His heart holds no compassion. But worst of all, he flaunts his flatulence to no extent. But it doesn't matter. Because I, the great and powerful Viper, have captured one of his henchmen! Where's Rodenticus? Tell me where he is! Viper. Ready PG-13. I, uh, apologize. I may have gone a little overboard with that sketch. Anyways, next article. Now, ending off today's episode is a bit of some tragic news. Beloved Marvel creator Stan Lee is experiencing some loss. Um, 
due to the fact that his wife, Joan, just passed away at the age of 93. Uh, she passed away last Thursday morning uh, because of a stroke. And she had been hospitalized earlier that week, but um, there was nothing they could do. So my heart goes out to Stanley and his family. I'm sorry you had to experience this. I wish you the best. Ending on that note, that concludes today's episode of Cinemuck. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps me out. I love to know your feedback. Uh, and I'll see you next time on Studio Ginger. Now I'm going to have people point out squirrels to me all the time saying the rodenticus. I I have accidentally screwed myself over.